you had your chance, and then you blew it. That is the most absurd statement of the year. Noise. <laughs> Noise. Oh, baby. I'm in my zone. I'm feeling it. Live from Rock Solid Studios in Granite Falls, it's time for Minnesota Sports, live with DJ Matty C and Paul the Shield Vold. Hey, what's up, Minnesota sports fans? This is former Minnesota Viking linebacker Chad Greenway. Just want to give a shout out to Matt, Paul, and all of the Minnesota crew. Uh, catch them. It's a new podcast, Minnesota, all things Minnesota sports live Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. on Facebook Live. Hey, Skull Bikes, appreciate you guys. Let's try that again. And this is Minnesota Sports Live. Like Chad Greenway has said, you can't start a show any better. Any better, folks. This is great. Anyway, without further ado, I am your host, DJ Matty C, a.k.a. Matt Callahan, a.k.a. Matty C, a.k.a. Callie, ah, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And without further ado, from Woods and Shores Studios in Aiken, Minnesota, Paul Vault. Ah! What's up, Chill? Not a whole lot. It's another beautiful Wednesday. I've got my Chad Greenway jersey on. We are ready to go. Another great show. Uh, I just... I can't wait, and Chad Greenway, what a guy, honestly. Oh, fans, that was awesome. Awesome to see that. Yeah. Oh, that was great. Like, I uh, appreciate everything that he did as a Minnesota Viking and what he's done in the community and everything like that, and giving us a shout-out. It warms our heart. It warms the zoners' hearts, and there's nothing any better. And without further ado, we brought back – our guest from last week, Mikey Ryan, our Minnesota Vikings insider, as we give him claps as well for coming back. This is fantastic. Mikey, I know, you know, last, last week we were talking about OBJ, and now we can finally talk draft. I oh, mean, yeah. <laughs> we, we, we talked about it for just a, a titch, just a real uh, short time, but... The good news is, Mikey, is that we got you back. You're ready to go. Got to have all. We're gonna have all the draft analysis, and it's gonna be great, you know, because Voldy's gonna have his thoughts. I'm gonna have my thoughts on it. And by the way, uh, check out the jersey. I'm wearing a Cleveland jersey. Well, now, Maddie C, why are you wearing a Cleveland jersey? Well, it's because this certain Cleveland person was on um, the Cleveland Browns. He is not anymore. He was, he's called, as Voldy likes to say, Johnny Bench, a.k.a. Johnny Clipboard, a.k.a. etc., etc. Et so anyway, without further ado, this is what I'm talking about, folks. Johnny Manziel. And now, we, yeah, you got you to do it, you know. <laughs> and here's the thing. The reason why I did this is because he is on the infamous list, and that will be coming soon, by the way, our top ten infamous list. Johnny has been on that list, and we have been talking about Johnny for a long while. But I had to wear it for the zoners, for everyone else. Who does he play for now? Exactly. No, he doesn't play for anybody. Nobody. He just golfs, according to his Instagram. So, anyway, uh, Johnny football. He just can't get enough. <laughs> All right, anyway, uh, we got to start things off with something called uh, Tater Tot. Hot take. Fresh out of the oven, it's Tater Tot Hot Take. All right, gentlemen. So we uh, talked about this a little bit last show, but we want to go more in depth. The Vikes are almost on the clock, okay? There's been a lot of rumors about the Vikings trading up, trading down, staying put, but guess what? There's nothing new there because it happens every single year year with the Vikings so 
uh, again, this draft, you know, you can say, oh, I'm really excited for this year's draft, you know, but all the drafts I feel are exciting, no matter what. Um, they have a stacked wide receiving class uh, this year. Um, if you can't get a wide receiver in the first round, well, you, you could definitely find a diamond in the rough in the second, third, fourth, uh, and, and so on. So um, we're going to be talking about uh, mainly the Vikings here because we have our Vikings insider. We got to talk about that. So uh, anyway, uh, Mikey, you know, before we get your first round picks, because we want to start with you, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, I asked you, you know, what guys you were kind of thinking of and um, – you kind of gave a little tidbit to me, but besides O-line, which we talk about a lot, besides oh, yeah. cornerback, what is kind of the low-key uh, position that you think the Vikings could target in probably the later rounds? Um, I'm thinking like later rounds, probably somewhere on the defensive line. I know we, um, we do need an edge rusher now with uh, Everson Griffin being gone. Um, but I think we have enough enough depth right there to be fine um, for just like key, uh, rotational players and situations. Um, but uh, the the last two great defensive ends that we had, Everson Griffin and Daniel Hunter, have all come in the later rounds, fourth round or later. So I'm looking at a D end or D tackle, one anything on either an edge rusher or interior lineman. We need to get someone there during the late rounds because we're really good at developing them. It's yeah. been tried and true with both of them. I know there've been, there've likely been more misses than hits, but, um, <laughs> but we if we get someone in there, I would watch out. Like watch like day two, day three. Watch out for some of those DN names because they could be uh, future All Pros for the Minnesota Vikings. Right, and. Another thing I like to bring up too is they've they've found some diamonds in the rough in the fourth round. You know, Daniil, who I think was third, right? Like you mentioned, um, Stefan Diggs, he was fourth rounder. So you you got to look at it and say, does it, for wide receiver, you don't have to get a wide receiver right away. You really don't. But if you really like the guy, take him. I, I feel like, but. Again, you know, we talk about the needs with cornerback and we talk about the needs with offensive linemen. Um, but it, it's li like you were saying, this is something that they need to address as well. You can't just focus in on one position. You know, the Kerf doctor, would he wishes that the Vikings could go O-line, 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 just a bunch of <laughs> – the, the, the whole draft. whole draft with O-line. But, you know – a little over exaggeration, but hey, you know what? O lines win you championships. I can tell you that much because every team that has won it has had a good O line. So, uh, Voldy, I'm gonna direct a question to you here. Um, what what other positions uh, are what do you think the Vikings will target in the later rounds? You know, you really look at how things are going to try to go here in the later rounds for the Vikings. Obviously, you want to key in on the defense because. A lot of them on the backside of the defense with it being maybe try to shore up at the, the safety position because, you know, Harrison Smith, of course, he's an all pro guy, got snubbed out of the all pro, you know, all decade team. But you definitely want to find a complimentary piece to go along with him. Last couple of safeties that have gone along, of course, Anthony Harris, who knows, maybe right. will get moved with that franchise tag that he has. But try to develop something on the backside. Cornerback, of course, we're all talking about at the higher end. But if you can find a real nice piece in the later rounds, maybe the fourth and fifth rounds, to try and find another cornerback or two, I think that's a good way to at least try to find something and try to rebuild an entire defensive back, you know, a, de a secondary right. that has just literally got two guys left from the previous year. Right. And... I don't want to rule this out, too, but, you know, uh, Jimbo, unofficial sponsor of Minnesota Sports Live, uh, he says cornerback, 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 which, yep. I mean, yeah, I could be fine with that. That's the Zimmer way. I mean, it really is. So, uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't be opposed to them stacking uh, cornerbacks, but one position I'm looking at, guys, and there is a safety in this draft. Let's just say the Vikings trade away Anthony Harris, okay? You trade away Anthony Harris, you free up some cap space. Do you trade him to Washington so you get a Trent Williams? I don't know. 
we'll see. But that's kind of something I'm looking at because if you have Harrison Smith there, but then you're looking at um, Antoine Winfield Jr. Now, Antoine Winfield Jr., I think, could be a guy you can look at in the second round. I don't think he'll be a first-round pick. But if you trade away Anthony Harris either during the draft or before here, I mean, am I far off, Mikey? Could this happen? It could, definitely. Um, if we wanted to clear up cap space with the Anthony Harris trade and get maybe like a pick or two in the draft, um, if we get a second rounder for him, that I'd, I'd definitely take it. And then um, – if Antoine Winfield Jr. is on the board, I think that I think that'd be a perfect fit. His dad played here. He played at Minnesota. He, I think, I believe he loves the Minnesota town, like Minnesota area. Um, so I think it'd be perfect. He's, a, like, he's he's always been on a little bit of a shorter side, but on the safety, we've seen him at Minnesota. He plays well. He plays big, and he's and he's decently fast at that area too. So I would like the trade. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, yeah, I would like to trade. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Yeah. Um, to if we got him there. Um, but if if he's, I yeah, I, I agree with you. If he get if it's in the second, I I think so. But if I don't think we spend a first round pick on him. Right. And he, I think it'll work perfectly if you trade away. But I want to get to a couple zoners here. They the chimed in. We'll pause this for a sec. But um, oh, are we talking Wilson tonight? Uh, we are not. But if you have a question. You can throw it to uh, throw it our way, anytime. Uh, shout out Will Rochelle for that question, as always. He's got a uh, new episode with this podcast, so make sure you check it out. And then there was another zoner that chimed in about the Granite City Lumberjacks uh, uh, g- giving a jersey away to Dave Portnoy from Barstool Sports. More on that later. Just stay don't worry, tuned. Carl. We got you covered. We got you covered. Okay. Stay, stay tuned. tuned. It's coming. Listen up, everybody. Listen up. I'm cutting your ears off with shears. Just listen up. Okay, listen up. But anyway, I I think – I hope Harris stays. He compliments Harrison well. Great cover safety to balance Harry's aggressiveness. I agree with you. I really do agree with you on that. I really like Anthony Harris. But if you have a chance to do that, to to get a Trent Williams, and that if you do lose Harris, you can find that in – Antoine Winfield, as my cousin Lucas said, uh, Antoine Winfield Jr. Again, he's like his dad. He can make the tackles. He can pick off the ball. I mean, I I watched a lot of the uh, golfer games. He's a baller. I mean, he's a baller, man. And just like his dad. And he is going to be one heck of an NFL player. I, I firmly believe it. And I really hope if it's not with the Vikings, I'll be his number one fan. Any team he goes, besides the Packers, the Lions, the Ants, the Bears. So, uh, we'll, we'll, plus he's going on like he, he was. This was like his seventh year of college eligibility. Right. He's yeah. got to be pro ready. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If he's not a second round talent, I mean, the guy was all over the place in yeah. college. He's hurt. He's ready to go. Then he's hurt again. He played one game this year, one game three years ago. I mean, he's got to be ready to go. I mean, Vikes got to make a move after him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If they make that trade is one I'm exactly. making, you know, so, but yeah, Voldy, do you think that's out of the question if they trade away Harris? I, I certainly don't think it's out of the realm of possibility. It, you look at Anthony Harris, I think for the Vikings right now, they got to sell while the, while the stock is at its highest right. coming off a, a career year in a very unproven career that he's been a young guy and you can get, a couple of decent, you know, moves out of him and maybe get a pick a little bit further up in a certain round. I think it's only going to benefit the Vikings. Wouldn't put it past Spielman and Zimmer to to pull that trigger. And, you know, if it's so be it, it's going to be unfortunate for the Vikings and unfortunate for Anthony Harris, but hopefully it goes to a quality ball club. Right. And, and we got to we, we gotta look at this and say this is only if they trade him. You know, mm-hmm. at, at, do I think they'll trade? I mean, there's a chance. There really is a chance. But you, you, you got to look at it and say, okay, if you're going to trade away Harris, then you got to get someone to fill the void. I mean, Sandejo's gone, I believe. Uh, he signed with another team. So, you know, we got to, 
you know, figure that out. So if they give away Harris, that'll be the guess. But, and again, we want our zoners to chime in as well on this. I mean, who do you guys think the Vikings are going to take at 22 and 25? Because we got to know. We got to see uh, what we got. So um, anyway, Mikey, uh, I got to ask you, what are, what is your, I mean, it's kind of a mini mock draft in a way. It's mm. just, I mean, it depends on if they trade or if they trade up or they trade back, things like that. So, Mikey, I got to ask you, who are the two guys that the Vikings will take if they stay put? Yeah, yeah if they put, I got to I gotta say uh, 22, we're probably going to take, um, I want to say Josh Jones from Houston. I like his size. I like his versatility. He's fast. Um, he's got like a, he's got a mean demeanor to him. There's a couple things that we, uh, need to coach him up on. Uh, sometimes he has, he tends to grab a little bit too much, but everything I think that's wrong with him is coachable. And we, he can definitely be a solid, if not an all pro at uh, tackle for us. And if we can get him at that, at that spot at 22, it'd be great. Um, and then at 25, I think we're going to go with Christian Fulton. Um, he just has everything you want in the corner. He's big, he's tall, he's fast. Uh, he's good with man to man. I believe you can coach him up in zone. I haven't seen him too much in zone, um, so I can't say if he's like if he's really good in zone coverage at all. But I believe Zimmer's defense is more man to man unless he starts bringing the blitz packages, which I know he likes to bring a lot. Um, but he he does like his man to man coverage and he loves grooming corners. Um, he's been really good at it, and we've we've seen it time and time again with how how he's been really good at grooming corners. So. Um, yeah, those are my two picks. I think they're going to be really solid at that point. Um, you can't go wrong with those two. Um, yeah. And, and then if for some reason, um, to give its owners another name, uh, if some reason Josh Jones has gone at 22, I think Ezra Cleveland, um, okay. is a good pick there as well. Um, if you, if they show tape of him during, uh, on tomorrow, uh, during the draft, uh, if we pick him, he's going to remind you a lot of Brian O'Neill. He's long, he's lanky. He doesn't have a lot of strength, but we've seen with Brian O'Neill, like you can build that up and he, you can, he can become a good prospect for us. Right. And that addresses a big need. And the, the, this is, this is another thing that I uh, saw here. The zoner chimed in saying, let's talk about a real team. Uh, the Packers, uh, we don't talk about that. Pipe down, Casey. Pipe down. So what ask for your he, opinion. Yeah. Here's what I'm going to say. Here are the Packers. <laughs> uh, they're, they're, they're not going to take anyone. The clock's going to hit zero, and they're not going to have a pick. So that, that's what's going to happen, unfortunately, for the Darn players. tootin'. Ah, shucks. Darn it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, bad job. But, uh, yeah, I, I mean, Mikey, I, I think that is pretty much spot on. They need to go left hand. I mean, again, Riley Reef. I mean, he's 31 years old, Okay. He's in the final year of his deal, and we got to do something with him, okay? We, I mean, the thing is, is that there's too much inconsistency with Riley Reef, and I think Josh Jones is someone that can definitely help and step in. Ezra Cleveland's another guy. I agree with you, Mikey. I, I think we're on the same page with that. And, I mean, I don't know. It, it, it's kind of one of those things where a lot of people are looking at this. They're saying, you know, they're either going to go O-line or corner. you got to go both. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> get out of here with that cheesehead stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let them know, Victor. Let them know. <laughs> Let them know. <laughs> oh, you got to love it. Uh, good fun. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, again, another name that I haven't mentioned, Trevon Diggs. I'm going to start with Voldy here. <laughs> Do the Vikings pull the trigger on Stefan Diggs' brother? I think so. Oh. I think they do. Oh. You, you, you let the, you let the talent right speak for itself. <laughs> you know, you get the younger, you get hopefully the better version, the the one with less drama, the younger brother, me being a younger brother, there's a lot less, uh, <laughs> you know, to work with. I mean, when it comes to the whole, uh, you know, it's all about me personality, but I like to see the fact that maybe Trevon Diggs could, uh, you know, keep things in the family, but at the same time, prove to be that, you know, he's the better of the two Diggs brothers. <laughs> I'd like to see the Vikings make a move after him. Absolutely. That would be interesting. I don't know how Stefan would feel about it, but you know what? That's so far gone. You know, he's in Buffalo now, and, you know, that's – but I don't know. I I mean, is uh, Trayvon a different 
person, you know, like, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see. But he is a very good corner. I could see him fitting in as well. But, uh, again, I, there's that side of me that's like, uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. Another name that I like uh, that, that I'll mention, too, A.J. Terrell. Okay. Mm-hmm. He's from Clemson, a guy that is, I think, fits the, the Zimmer mold. And you, you can either trade up to get him, you can either trade down to get him. But, I mean, it's, it's a different type of corner. But he is a guy that I think is good in man-to-man. But I want to get to our zoners as well. Uh, different sides of the ball, offensive guys are more expressive than defensive. Trevon is not going to complain about getting the ball on defense. Well, it's true. Very he'll true. Be, he'll be taking away the ball. I agree with you, Dylan. Exactly. 100%. Uh, we got Tyler chiming in. Take him and give him number 14. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's an approved statement. That's an approved statement. So we, yeah. Yeah. So we got to – you got to make note of that because we'll be uh, keeping track of absurd statements and approved statements. So, zoners, make sure you send them in to us because we really appreciate it. But, anyway, I think A.J. Terrell is a guy that they should take, too. Um, and, and, and if not, I think Fulton is a great corner as well. But, you know, wide receiver, if they go Justin Jefferson, I th- I'm a big fan of Jefferson. I think that they could go that route, too. I think that's what they need outside of Thielen. And then you got BC and things like that. So, drama and the shield go together like milk and cookies. Uh oh. <laughs> hand in hand, Bale. You know it, baby. Yeah, yeah. We're having too much fun already. We're having too much fun already. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, guys, great talking draft. I, I think we got a lot. We had a lot to talk about, and we thank Mikey for coming on again, a second time. Okay, that, that's pretty good. That is very good. And, you know, we finally got to talk a little draft with you, Mikey, and we're, we're going to have you on again. I mean, it's, it's going to happen. So uh, we really appreciate it, Mikey. And um, any last thoughts for the draft? Uh, not really. I think, w- like, with the wide receiver, I, I think that's also a good thing, too. Yeah. Um, but I, I would like to see us in the second round because there's also another gopher that could be a second-round pick oh. at wide receiver for us there. So – Watch out for, uh, yeah, Tyler Johnson. I think that I think he'd fit us really well there. I think I think they could probably pull the trigger. I mean, there's so many options. Oh, there's I know. So many options. So, I agree. I think if Tyler Johnson were in the purple and gold, watch out, man. He's gonna be pretty good, man. <laughs> Hopefully, he doesn't go to the Raiders, man. So, anyway, uh, Mikey, uh, we appreciate you. Thanks for coming on again. And keep, uh, you know, if you got time, keep tuning in. We got oh. a lot to more talk about. Oh, I, I'll, I'll, I'll keep tuned in. I'm already tuned in right now. So, <laughs> there you go. Right baby. Yeah, you got to love it. All right, Thanks for having any, me on, guys. Yeah, no, always. It's always a pleasure. So, anyway, uh, we'll talk to you later, Mikey. And uh, we're going to move on. This week, it's Callahan School of Logic. And you know what we're going to talk about? We're going to talk about the ESPN 30 for 30, The Last Dance. And it's going to be so great, guys. I, I can't wait to talk about this. I want you guys to chime in as well on your thoughts of the documentary. So this is Callahan School of Logic. Class is in session. You're enrolled in Callahan School of Logic. Okay, I need a Coach Hines thing here, uh, Kerf Doctor. I think this would be perfect for this. So listen up, everybody. Listen up, everybody. Listen up or I'm cutting your ears off with shears. Well, no, I, I won't. I won't do that. But we had to play some Coach Hines. Okay, you got to listen up. I'm not going to cut your ears off with shears. But anyway. What are you um, laughing at, Yamanashi? Yeah, what are you laughing at, Yamanashi? I'm, I'm sick, sick of it. Of it. <laughs> I, I'm so I feel so bad because Voldy can't hear this. I, mean, I can't. I know. And I love it. And he loves it's Coach Hines. We all oh love Coach Oh my goodness! Oh. I'm sorry, Voldy. I, I'm really sorry. Yeah, watch the. Get to watch the live stream later. Yeah, yeah, do that. Do that. Because <laughs> I am sick of it. But uh, yeah. sick of it. <laughs> so anyway, we better get to our topic here. But hey, uh, the last dance, Voldy. Have you seen the documentary yet? 
Yes, yes, I did watch it. I didn't watch it live like everybody else yes, because so. 90 Day Fiance took priority. Ah, ah, I will ah, I will ah. be the first one to say that. Let me guess. Let's just get that out of the way. Uh, the, your, our creative consultant forced you to watch that. No, 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 no. Well, that's become our it. thing. Yes, I made priority, okay. and we got a lot of shows on Sunday night, but sure. 90 Day Fiance took priority. I gladly watched it Monday night, and boy, <laughs> am I hooked right away. Oh, my goodness. And yes. that's impossible. And that's impossible, as Coach Hines is saying right now. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I, I, well, hey, you know, you watch what you want to watch. But, hey, you, you've watched it. You've seen both episodes, if I'm correct, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Very true, yes. So anyway, um, there, there's a couple things that I'd like to talk about here uh, with this documentary, Boldy, and our fellow zoners. And, I, and, again, zoners, chime in what you thought if you've seen the documentary can't skip 90 day hey there you go Victor's, victor knows uh, the truth absolutely you. so i guess that's what it is so uh <laughs> <laughs> anyway um you, when you look at this documentary and michael jordan one of the best basketball players ever and you, you kind of they kind of focus on their last season together aka the last dance and, you know, they go back in time, you know, before they drafted Jordan, kind of uh, how he uh, came to be from, from Mike to Michael Jordan, it, you know, at UNC, things like that. And, um, there, I mean, this documentary might be the best documentary, like, ever. <laughs> I mean, it, it really is. And um, the first two episodes – uh, were as advertised. <laughs> I mean, hundred percent. And we gotta think about. Um, I mean, all the hoops that they had to jump through. Their general manager, and then uh, uh, Jimbo. As we say, I haven't watched it. I lived it. Yeah, there you go. Jimbo did. There you MJ go. is all time best player. I'm gonna get to that in a second. So we. We look at this uh, a couple things. The GOAT debate between Jordan, LeBron, we'll get to that. But I just want to talk about how this Jerry Krause, this guy, wow. I I mean, (laughs) uh, if you're uh, messing with Jordan, you're messing with Pippen, and you won't pay Pippen when he was – a top tier player in the NBA at that point in time. There's something wrong with you. I mean, there really is something wrong with you. If you you're gonna give him a back seat, and then Jordan, I mean, they made fun of the guy. How dare you leave Kobe out of that combo convo? How oh, I'm getting there. I never oh. saw. Oh, let's wait. Pump the brakes let's here, wait. people. Let, let's pump the brakes. Before I, uh, I need to talk about what I need to talk about here, Mr. Cord Hansen. You know what I'm talking Let about. Let the man here. speak. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting there, okay? There's a lot to, <laughs> you know, we'll talk about the GOAT debate in a second, okay? But <laughs> this Jerry Krause, I mean, this GM, this, uh, I, the owner of the Bulls was even saying, he's like, he's like, the guys were telling him, don't trust this guy, don't trust this guy, and so they get him. The thing is, is that he wasn't, awful because he didn't make some good signings i mean you had dennis rodman you have you know scotty pippen you have steve kerr i mean there were a lot of guys that he signed and 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 he traded for and things like that so you got to give him some credit but at the same time i mean if you can't get along with your best players and you won't pay your best players there's something wrong with you there really is and the logic behind it here, zoners, is there's no logic at all. The greatest basketball player of all time, and you, you can't get along with him, and, and this is their last dance, and you tell Phil Jackson that this is your last year, Phil. Bye. He, he won you five titles at that point. Five. Bye. Absurd. I mean, it's absurd. And It is. I mean, but... Other than that, it, it's got to understand, and, we, and we're going to get to uh, LeBron here. Can we talk about LeBron stands out there using this stock to boost LeBron? 
Oh yeah, there's there's a lot of them already, and we're gonna get oh, yeah. to that too. So stay tuned. Anyway, but I mean the the the. The documentary, and I want your thoughts on the documentary as well, Voldy, but I think the whole uh, aura around this is that they found a way to win their last championship with all the outside distractions and they're like, oh, what's going to happen the year after and things like that. They came together and (laughs) they won a sixth title. So, um, Voldy, what are your thoughts on the documentary? You know, just from the the first two episodes of the 10-part series – it's right. going to be a wild ride. Yeah. The fact that it jumps back and forth, it's none of it's assuming that you know everything about Michael Jordan, Scotty Pippen, Dennis Robin, Phil Jackson, Jerry Reinsdorf, and even the GM Krause as well. It, it goes back and forth. It explains everything, relates it back to what happened leading up to these moments. And, you know, from the first two episodes we saw it, that we saw, you know, the, the Bulls struggled right okay. out of the gate. Coming off, you know, the, the the fifth championship. And, you know, that just shows to how much that it's a full grind of a season. It is. You go the full 82-game schedule. Then you go into the fact you got to play four rounds of the playoffs at minimum. Then you go to the finals, and then you're done. You win the championship. That's probably, at most, 100, 110-game season roundabouts. My mouth is probably off if you go, yeah. you know, full seven-game series, which they probably didn't because, you know, it was the 90s Bulls, and they, they took care of business in the first couple of rounds. Looking at the documentary from the first two episodes, I'm not a basketball guy at all, but right. when you bring some of the history, the nostalgia, the stories behind yeah. it, I'm I'm all about that. I'm all about the nostalgia and the history side of things. Oh, yeah. I'm locked in. You see some of the best players in the NBA ever, not just the teams, but the individuals themselves, MJ in his prime back then and talking about now, it's awesome. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. And and the fact that, you know, MJ is so forthcoming about it because he's not, you know, he's not very one to come out and, you know, do a lot of these, you know, long, big interviews and everything. And he's just there sitting at his house, talking to the camera, a lot of personal stories. It, it, it's great. I can't wait. Every Sunday night, of course, after 90 Day Fiance is going to be <laughs> fantastic. Priorities, people. i got to keep my priorities straight. Oh, man. We're back to that now. <laughs> yes, no. you got to throw right. back in there. All right. Just can't go back and forth. Yeah. So, Corn is uh, saying here, Kraus didn't value players. He valued money and championships, which he got, which is true. I understand What, didn't that. you? Yeah. Well, yeah, true. But Everybody again, wants to win a championship. Yeah. That's how it is. Right. And it's – he did what he needed to do, but in the end, he lost respect from key people in the organization. He did. I mean, uh, Phil Jackson, who went on to win more finals championships, and uh, Michael Jordan, obviously, you know, he didn't win one after that. But this is something that we all have to – understand is that dynasties end okay the patriots dynasty i mean that just ended not too long ago no offense voldy but it, you know, Answer. it, it really has i mean we'll get to that more oh <laughs> let me play a sad <laughs> song for you on the world's smallest violin <laughs> oh good job kerf doctor way to go uh and then uh, Tyler says, shut up, Court. Whoa, 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 chill, guys. All right. Ow. Well, it's all good fun. Anyway, so let's move on to this, this GOAT debate, okay? Now, whenever I talk, we, we talk about this GOAT debate between Michael Jordan and LeBron and Kobe Bryant. See what I did there? Uh, so we... They are all great, okay? Michael Jordan, LeBron, Kobe, okay? Now, if you look at all their stats, they led this almost the same way. Get out of my way. I'm going to score. You know, I'm going to do what I can for this team. I am the leader, okay? Michael Jordan did that, okay? Michael Jordan took the bull <laughs> – by the horns, and no, no pun intended. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. 
He did play for the Wizards too, but anyway, we, we don't yeah. talk about that one. But, <laughs> <laughs> but we, we got to look at this and say, okay, you know, all the stats, we compare rings, we compare stats and things like that. But there are – if we are comparing rings and you're saying, well, Jordan has more rings than LeBron and Kobe, okay. But there are other factors to the GOAT debate. If you guys want to talk about the GOAT debate, I don't like talking about the GOAT debate. That's just me because it's kind of – it's overblown, and Jordan was the best – in his time, okay? Kobe was the best in his time. LeBron comes. LeBron has been the best NBA player of his time, okay? Now, you look at the physical attributes. LeBron definitely is a guy. He's a physical specimen. He is a big dude. He will go down the lane. He will dunk on you. He'll. I mean, he can, his outside shot, eh. But Jordan had the scorer's ability. Jordan found ways to get to the uh, bucket. He found ways to shoot. He f- I mean, the guy was averaging 30 points at one time, you know? I mean, Jordan is unbelievable. Kobe, I mean, uh, every time I shoot a basketball, I just want to say, Kobe, you know, RIP Kobe. But, again, if we, if we want to talk about rings, uh, Bill Russell has 11. Shouldn't he be in? that too if we're talking rings there are so many factors to this okay but one thing holds true is that they were best of their generation during that time the thing is is guys they're not going to play against each other jordan's not going to play against lebron right now (laughs) you know i mean when kobe was still around you know still alive i mean you know lebron and kobe you know played against each other and they both had success okay but we, we got to look at this and say, I mean, this, this whole GOAT debate is kind of irrelevant, okay? But if it came down to it, okay, and I'm going to say this right now, Michael Jordan is, in fact, the GOAT overall. Enough said, okay? And we all have to believe, we all have to believe, like I said, LeBron doesn't have the killer mentality. Uh, Does not. No. He... He's too concerned with how good he appears to be. That, that's, not, that's not a bad point. I, I think it took LeBron more time to get it. Jordan had it right away. I mean, you watch the documentary. His first year, he went in there and go and went, you know, do a simulation. They're doing tons of those nowadays. Yeah, but, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. The, the whole simulation type of thing, I, I'm not a huge fan of. But – when it comes down to it, I believe that Michael Jordan is, okay? I like LeBron a lot. I, I am a LeBron fan. But I have to admit that Le, uh, LeBron James is not better than Michael Jordan, okay? Michael Jordan is, in fact, the GOAT. Enough said. Voldy, your thoughts? I boil it down to this. Michael Jordan, the greatest player of all time. Michael Jordan, the best player in the 90s. Kobe Bryant, the best player in the 2000s. LeBron James, the best player in the 2010s. That's it. Move on. And Michael Jordan will be the greatest player of all time. That is it. There's no more debate about it. You you can't. You can't. You can debate about it all you want, but at the end of the day, you can look at all the numbers. You can look at all the stats. But what is one thing that people automatically boil it down to? What's the first name when you talk about NBA? What's the first name that comes to your mind at all? You take any, any player, any fan, Whatsoever you talk about NBA basketball, what's one of the first names? One of the top two, three names that comes to your mind? Michael Jordan. The man himself, not just basketball, he transcended sports, yeah. pop culture, fashion. The man's got his own brand yeah. that's still talked about to this day. And he's been done retired for what? At least, uh, I don't know when he retired. It was early 2000s, I think. At least 15, maybe 20 years. Yeah. Still talked about to this day. Not a lot of people get to wear the Jordan brand to begin with. That is how selected it is. Yeah. Not just anybody and everybody. Anybody can wear wear LeBrons. Anybody can go get themselves a pair of Kobe's. You know, nowadays it's a little tough to do that. But 
Jordan Brand stuff, you want to become Jordan Brand, go through him and him only. That is why he is the greatest of all time. Right. And, you know, our zoners are chiming in here. Someone said Dirk. Uh, yeah, okay. It's okay. Uh, no. But, greatest uh, European player of all time. I'll throw that I, out there. I'll say that. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Um, but uh, one of our zoners said, I wouldn't play mini golf against MJ because he'd probably stare you down, and he's super competitive, which Kobe and LeBron and Michael are very competitive. I mean, it, it, I mean, Kobe told Jordan that he'd beat his butt. You know, obviously, oh, yeah. this is a PG show with a sprinkle of 13. But, I mean, he, he told him to his face, and, and Jordan would say, yeah, yeah he'd tell me. He tell me so. It'd be it's very interesting. So the moral of the story is that we got to look at LeBron's on the Mount Rushmore, uh, Magic definitely, Jimbo, uh, um, Bird as well. I mean both. I mean Bird was just a phenomenal shooter. So yeah, they're definitely up there on the uh, Mount Rushmore. So anyway, that was a good one. I know Callian School of Logic was very good uh, and. Here's the thing. We're going to our favorite segment, and it's called Absurd or Approved. It's time for everyone's favorite segment, Absurd or Approved. <laughs> Voldy, the thing is, is I already know what you're starting off with. Your first two. Okay, why don't you rattle them off for us, please? All right, big news in the world of NFL football as of yesterday. Now, there was a lot of speculation if and when he was going to come back, but it was made official yesterday. Rob Gronkowski is out of retirement. Where is he going? Not back to New England, nope. The England Patriots traded Gronkowski and also a pick to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to... Tampa Bay to rejoin old Tom Brady for one last ride. They what? are making an official 13 months away from football. Re-energized. He's got, he's got a fully healthy body. He's back up to a good healthy weight. I think it was last report he was at 260, and he is going to be ready to go. Just the combination alone, you look at the numbers, Tom Brady and uh, Rob Gronkowski, 78 touchdowns alone. Next yeah. closest guy, Randy Moss, 39, almost twice as many. No, literally twice as many touchdowns yeah. as Randy Moss had with Rob Gronkowski. Now, look at here, a lot of situations to look at here overall. But I want to pose the question to you. Absurd or approved, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers will make the postseason and make a serious postseason run. They're still in a division with the New Orleans Aints. And as much as I hate to say it, I mean, they're pretty good. They are pretty good. But with them adding Rob Gronkowski, and as Dylan said here in the chat, Gronk makes football fun. Yeah, he really does. Who is uh, Tom Brady's other tight end? O.J. Howard. Approved, Jim. They have says. four tight ends on their team. Yeah. Cameron Bray. It's crazy. Yep, yep. Crazy now. Defense wins championships, which is true, easy, eh? Now, so does special teams, but, yeah. you know, I mean, it's not got to do with anything. Right. But here's the <laughs> thing. Voldy, I, I'm looking at this, and them adding Gronkowski almost solidifies that it's got my stamp of approval because I think they're going to make the playoffs. I really do. Now, Gronk, I think Gronk's got to get a uh, – little bit more uh, buffer now, too, because, you know, I know he's, he's, he's definitely lost some weight. But, you know, again, uh, I, I'm looking at this, and then there, there are things, the people talking about this right now, absurd, they still need to address defense, uh, needs, uh, they do have a tough division. Like I said, Tampa Bay hosts the Super Bowl next year. Boldy, we, they do. we've talked about. Uh, and then Dylan says approved, their defense is solid. I believe so, too. I think they brought back Sue, right, if I'm not mistaken. And they um, – Levante David's a really good linebacker. 
Um, the corners, uh, not too much. But, again, you have Tom Brady, okay? You have Tom Brady. You have Mike Evans. You have Chris Godwin. You have Rob Gronkowski, O.J. Howard, Cameron Bray. There's so many things going on here. Uh, so, uh, serious It's going to be a track meet yeah, it will. in, the, in it Tampa will. Bay. Ser- it's going to be a track meet out there. Right, right. Serious question. Does Voldy get TB12 or Gronk threads? I think you're going to get both. Please, both. both. Easy. Next question. Go, <laughs> Next question. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's got my stamp of approval, Voldy. Uh, I... I assume it's got yours as well. It's got my stamp of approval, but I want to look right here into the camera. I want to get serious here for a moment. I'm going to make a bold prediction here, and you can bring this back for absurd statement of the year. I look into this camera, and I tell all the zoners out there that Tom Brady and Bruce Arians, Rob Gronkowski, and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are winning the NFC South Division Championship and will make a serious postseason run. Now, I know that's an open-ended guarantee, but I definitely want to at least have some sort of merit if this does backfire on me, but they are winning the (laughs) NFC South Championship. All right. (laughs) We're holding on to this, okay? Because, (laughs) you know, I was wrong about the date straight, but if you're wrong about this, Voldy, that might edge mine, okay? It'll be something. It might. It would be something. (laughs) <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, I don't disagree with you, Boldy, because this is a te- this team <laughs> is looking really good. Really, really, really good on offense. Defensively, that'll be the question. Okay? That will be the question for this team. So, um, their own line's pretty good, easy A. Um, they're, they're not awful. But, yeah, the, the, I call them the ants are tough. I mean, yeah. Yeah, they are, but again, at the same time, it's the Aints. We don't care about the Aints here. We don't like the Aints here. So, <laughs> anyway, next one, Voldy. All right, we go right staying in Tampa yep. for this next story here. Recent report comes out, of course, a lot of stay-at-home orders in effect through the entire country of the United States of America, but one such person didn't quite get the memo And one such person had to ruin said person's day. It was reported that a person with the Parks Department in Tampa Bay uh, came upon a mysterious person uh, working out in a park in Tampa Bay. Lo and behold, who was it but Tom Brady himself? Now, this was a very interesting situation, of course. The mayor of Tampa Bay and also of uh, St. Petersburg were in a joint news conference the other day talking about uh, recent stay-at-home orders, things of that with daily updates, bringing this up to the fact that they were both shocked that it was Tom Brady working out at a local park. And the kind person that was working for the Parks Department kindly asked Tom Brady to move on. Absurd or approved the fact that someone had the gumption to go up to Tom Brady and tell him to leave somewhere. Is it absurd or approved? Oh, man. I mean, this is this is so odd and out of the, the – it's, it's really weird. But, again, uh, it looks like they tweeted and said, Sorry, Tom Brady, our uh, Tampa Parks and Rec team can't wait to welcome you to our entire – and our entire community back with even bigger smiles. Until then, stay safe and stay home as much as you can to help flatten the curve. Okay. So they, I mean, you know, it's kind of a give and take. But it's like, it's Tom Brady. Was he wearing a mask? Do we know? Do we know if he was uh, wearing a mask? I would certainly hope so. TB12 yeah. methods probably got a nice line of masks out for oh, everybody. Sure. Oh, probably sure. cost you $75 a pop. But, hey, yeah. got to pay pay for the quality, man. Pay for the brand. <laughs> Do you think he asked for an autograph before he told them to leave? Uh, he oh, might have. definitely. He might have. But again, Add you, to it. you know, I agree with Court, too, because he says approved he isn't above the law. You know, true. But don't care who you are. You have enough money to buy your own part. <laughs> okay. Uh, he's basically untouchable. I mean, yeah, but uh, it's such a tough uh, – uh, I mean, I, I would say it's approved because you want to make everyone – you got to have everyone safe. And, you know, not like Tom Brady, you know, is saying, you know, he's got the coronavirus or anything like that. 
but obviously we we, we got to we got to look at this at a broader scope and you know again you know i'm staying you know obviously we're essential workers myself voldy kerf doctor i mean it's it's one of those things where you got to stay safe and i'm sure he did he, he took every precaution um but again you know they they're just saying hey you know move on tom six feet exactly i agree i agree uh, Jane Vold, I think you know who that is. Oh, uh, yeah. Matt, come on. Approved. I did, yeah. I did. That's what I said. That's what I said. Stamp of approval. So, Voldy, what do you think? I think it, this is kind of a twofold for me. There's a little conflict of interest for myself. I look at it. It's proved, in my mind, the fact that uh, the park's worker looking out for the best interests of everybody. Sure. There's a lot going on. you got to take that into account. I think it's absurd you look at the fact, how dare you? Where do you get off approaching Thomas Edward Patrick Brady Jr. in a public park when he's just trying to work and take your team to an NFC South championship in the middle of a coronavirus pandemic? How dare you? That's what I have to say. Next question. <laughs> Next question. Uh, I mean... Uh, again, we, we got to uh, – I mean, I don't know. It's a tough one. Oh, Paul, David Vold, are you kidding me? Whoa. Oh, jeez. Uh-oh. I'm in trouble you now. see, now you dug yourself a hole. Okay. Uh, yep, there you go. <laughs> shame. <laughs> oh, shame. Okay, moving on. Uh, next one, Voldy. <laughs> we got uh, another one here, a hot topic and a hot prospect quite possibly leading up to the draft yes. tomorrow night. Well, it's looking like that the Jacksonville Jaguars are going to be shopping running back Leonard Fournette up until draft time. And, of course, it did see that one team that was particularly in need of a running back, that was in the need of Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We might as well call this absurd or approved Tampa Bay edition with the amount of stories that we've had so far. But there is a recent report saying that the Buccaneers are not going to be interested in taking Fournette. But there's been a lot of talk, Leonard Fournette, here this offseason of him, you know, uh, maybe moving on from him. Of course, he wants to stay in Jacksonville, bring in Cam Newton to lead this team after a lackluster year that included Nick Foles and Minshew Mania, Gardner Minshew. I, I kind of look at it here. Is it a possibility, absurd or approved, that uh, Leonard Fournette, moves on and gets straight away from Jacksonville. I think as uh, Thanos liked to say, I am an inevitable. I think it's <laughs> inevitable that he will be traded. But again, we, we got to look at this and say, okay, Leonard Fournette. I mean, the Jacksonville Jaguars right now. I mean, who wants to be in Jacksonville right now? I mean, it is such a mess over there. I mean, shoot, they were in the uh, NFC or no AFC Championship game, but you know, not too long ago, against the Patriots. Two years ago. Yeah, Jalen yeah. Ramsey gone. Nick Foles gone. I mean, uh, Clayus Campbell gone. I mean, this is crazy. You know, all these all these guys are gone now, and. Yannick and, and, and Gakwe, he wants to get out too. I mean, he's 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 mad, he's mad at uh, the, the, uh, Shad Khan's son. Uh, you know, on Twitter, they're having a little tirade going on. I mean, this is just crazy. He's frustrated. He wants out, and I don't blame him. I don't blame him one bit. So again, you know, it's it, Leonard Fournette is a is a really good running back, and I think if a team can land him, uh, it. Again, if it's the Bucks, I mean, I don't know. You're going to have to ask, you know, Tampa Bay fans if they'd want Leonard Fournette. So, I don't know. I, I mean, any pr prediction on where he might go? Well, you see a Rick. Hey, look, it's a Rick. It's a Rick. <laughs> uh, thanks for the question, Rick. Uh, you know, that's a good question. Uh, the Buccaneers do look like a pretty good place for him to go. Another team that you should look out for, too, which I think could be beneficial unless they're going to do the three-headed monster again, San Francisco. That could be a place, too. I mean, he's kind of the thunder. And then when Jarek McKinnon 
you know, Tevin Coleman and those guys come back, Raheem Mostert, hey, you could have a four-headed monster now. You got a guy with the power and then other guys with the quickness. So uh, we'll see how that turns out. But it's it's got my stamp of approval um, that, that, you know, he, he wants out. I mean, this is just crazy. Bill O'Brien would trade all their picks for him <laughs> if they <laughs> had any. But, um, I nailed it. Yes, claps all around. But, yeah, I agree. I, I think, um, yeah, it, it's got my stamp of approval, Leonard Fournette. Um, yeah, I think he'll, he'll get to a team where he'll enjoy playing there. So, Foldy, what do you think? Yeah, I think it's time for Fournette to move on and, you know, Jacksonville is more focused on the fact of running a pro wrestling company than they are uh, running their own football team, which has even got them to the point that where they are right now. But I, I think it's going to be interesting. The fact that we're talking about San Francisco leads into our next story here as I kind of jumped around here with some of the stories here for Absurd. Yeah, it's all right. Uh, I kind of look at it here, too. Maybe the Rams. Rams would That's be in one. need of, of a running back. You know, they let go Todd Gurley. Maybe they can get a guy who can, you know, help swing it out of the backfield. That'll be quite interesting to see. Nice comment there by Andrew there <laughs> from the, the from the penthouse we'll, we'll to the we'll outhouse. We'll forgive you for uh, uh, misspelling it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I I could definitely see it. You know, if it's going to be a draft night uh, decision, maybe San Francisco, maybe Los Angeles. Who knows? But I could definitely see. You know, Jacksonville maybe trying to move one of their players to either move up or maybe get a couple of, you know, stock picks oh, sure. in the later rounds as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I agree with you 100%. So. All right. Moving on here to yeah. our next story. I was kind of waiting there for the segue, but I guess we're just kind of moving. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it's all good. Oh, I, yeah. Sorry. Well, I it, we were, we, yeah, we were talking about San Francisco. Yeah. Now they're fielding all sorts of calls and interests of yeah. looking at moving, if not one, both of their first round picks, number 13, number 31 overall. Now looks like uh, John Lynch, not too, uh, you know, yeah not too happy about where they are. Maybe they just want to maybe move back a little bit after finishing as uh, you know, the NFC champions in the Super Bowl this past year, they have no, uh, they have no picks in the second round and no selections at all beyond that. You know, yeah. they have no second, third or fourth round picks and they want more picks. Of course they had to, you know, dive into the well a little bit to get where they are yeah. last year. So it may be, you know, it may be one pick for three or four picks for one of those. Sort of approved the, the fact that San Francisco is trying to stockpile on the back end. It's got my stamp of approval. I think they're, you know, they, they bet the house last time. Um, and again, you know, they're, they're a team that still needs a little bit more. And, um, they're on. They're knocking on the door. I mean, they're definitely a team to be reckoned with now in the NFC and beyond. So, I mean, this is a the, John Lynch knows what he's doing, and he has done a phenomenal job as the general manager of, uh, of the San Francisco 49ers. And they're a team that you got to look out for. And when they have those first round picks, and they, I mean you want to try and compile as many picks as you can because then you can add more to your roster. And, you know, are they going to be a plug-in player? Are they going to be like, we'll give you a tryout, but, you know, no guarantee that you're going to make the team type of thing. So, I mean, they're, they're a team – there's a lot of uh, people that think there might not be any trades because of this virtual draft, like Nick was saying. But I, I think there will be. I, I can't see anything – where they're like, oh, nope, we're not trading. I mean, Miami's talking about trading up. Uh, you got the Vikings in talks of trading back. I mean, this is it, – it's crazy. But, again, you know, if they want to get the guys they need to, I mean, if you don't have a second, third, fourth round pick, you're going to be waiting a long time. So, yeah, I, it's got my stamp of approval. They're just trying to go back. And uh, Lynch got half of Chicago for uh, uh, trading back one pick when the Bears took Trubusky. It's not Trubisky, it's Trubusky, but yeah, Very we'll forget true. for you. <laughs> so, a little <laughs> absurd, more picks doesn't mean more good players. Spend time and nail with the picks you have. They should be in a win now more. True, but, you know, it depends. It depends. 
That's why we love the draft. Exactly, Nick. So, exactly. Uh, Voldy, what do you think? I think it's a little bit absurd. You yeah. got the top picks. Make them work. Sure. John Lynch, he built a winner last year. Last couple years, you know, him being at the helm, he built the team that he wanted. He's got the coach that he wants. Came up short in the big game, but that's what you have to do. You go into this offseason, you bring in a couple of more guys, maybe subtract a little bit. You got two first-round picks, and if you end up being with those two picks or maybe trade one of them away for a couple more picks, so be it. But if you end up doing nothing, you got to make do with what you got. I, I don't like the fact that there's a lot of uncertainty with it, but that's the NFL draft. That what's, that's what brings the excitement and the fact that there is – the virtual element to it as well, that's going to whole, throw a whole nother wrench into it. The fact there isn't that in-person, you know, some deals under the table type things. There's going to be a lot of traces still left out there. I could definitely see John Lynch maybe moving that number 13 pick. Yeah. The number 31, I think that could stay in-house. But, you know, we don't know. We don't know until it happens tomorrow night. Right. And that's kind of the thing is, is like anything can happen happen exactly there's going to be all these surprise picks and things like that so we'll see how it goes but uh i got you this time next last one voldy i believe right there we go (laughs) that's what i like to see well finally the the standoff between two parties has come to an end winnipeg jets and dustin bufflin finally mutually agreed to terminate the contract between the two parties including the (laughs) nhl And the Players Association was announced this past week. The move is a result as uh, Bufflin had a little bit of some mixed feelings towards the Winnipeg Jets, of course. Bufflin being one of the, you know, founding players of the rebirth of the Winnipeg Jets since they moved from Atlanta to Winnipeg. And this comes at a time that, uh, you know, Dustin Bufflin had played for a couple of seasons. He'd been hampered with some injuries. He had taken a personal leave of absence. He was suspended without pay due to, you know, some cap relief for the Jets, which he wasn't a fan of. But he was set to make, you know, $8 million this year with another $6 million for next year. Now the fact that you throw in that he had to have surgery, so which to put him out for another chunk of a season. And you look at this guy, it's been two or three years since he's actually played some meaningful hockey. And, well, you you take a couple of years off, that's a lot of miles that you don't have, especially for as big of a guy as Dustin Bufflin is. Now there's even more reports coming out that he's even signing with Montreal. Can't quite for sure confirm that as all. Didn't know if it was one of those uh, trolling fake news sites that it posted <laughs> one of those. Yeah. Absurd or approved, the, the standoff finally coming to an end between Bufflin and the Jets. Oh, stamp of approval. And I think, uh, you know, another guy uh, would give a stamp of approval, and I think his name is uh, – he recently just had a birthday. I think his name is and DJ did. Bull. Yeah. Um, is it – when we get started up, could this be the time, the wild, get Dustin <laughs> Bufflin? I mean, I don't know, Voldy. I think DJ would like that a lot. and I and I'm I sure. think he would, but, you know, why not throw one more, you know, dead contract and <laughs> player well past his prime on the team? Why not? <laughs> you know, maybe we got to have you and uh, your brother debate this because I think he'd want him on the team. He loves uh, – Oh, that, uh, we'll see. Bufflin, we'll see. So. But, yeah, it's got my stamp of approval. I, I think it's, you know, it's finally time that this was ended. Like, like you were saying, you know, he was reportedly weighing retirement to – Um, He's 35 years old, and, you know, he's getting up there in age. But, um, you know, I think maybe he's got a couple more years left. I mean, he's a big guy. Um, You know, obviously with the ankle, you know, it's it's a tough deal. You know, I mean, you got to let – that takes time to heal too. So, obviously, him and the Jets weren't getting along. And, you know, he's a native too of Roseau, Minnesota. So, again, there's Minnesota connection. We'll have to see. So, Voldy, what do you think? I think it was about time. I mean, the fact that, you know, former Stanley Cup champion Dustin Bufflin, maybe maybe he comes (laughs) to the wild. That'd be fantastic. Why not cap off the career in in a wild sweater and maybe help out a team, try to figure out where it's going. You know, he he was one of the main reasons why the Winnipeg Jets became such a a big rival of the wild when they came back into the league and 
really made it a, a good time uh, to, to go to some of those games with the Winnipeg fans coming down to the yeah. XL Energy Center and Wild fans going up to, you know, the MTS Center up in Winnipeg. Those were always great games. But now seeing him just kind of a shell of himself as of late, maybe the couple years off, uh, you know, with the grievances, may have revitalized his career as well. Sometimes it takes a little bit of some, uh, you know, a little bit of some uh, clarity to the situation to maybe put forth a little bit extra effort. I think it's a, I think it's approved that, uh, you know, the two finally sided. Yeah. I think he'd look good in a wild sweater. Yeah, I mean, Jimbo said it. Uh, a couple of our zoners said it too. I mean, this is – maybe they can make this happen. I don't know. DJ would be a, a happy guy uh, if that – were to happen, Voldy. And I, I think know, so, too. You can't rule it out. You can't rule it out. So, anyway, uh, great job, Voldy. Uh, Thank you, sir. Uh, as always. And, um, you know, Voldy, this week, I think we got a pretty good set of uh, Shield shout-outs. So, um, let's get it rolling. Shield shout-outs. Another great comment uh, from Carl here. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, Voldy, rattle them off for us. All right, we got to start off. We got to give a big shield shout out to a friend of the show, Chad Greenway, right here. Huge thanks for the promo, Chad Greenway. It's Chad Greenway approved the zone. I mean, he did. He did. It, it. It's there. It's written in stone. It's it's on video. It's on the internet. It's definitely true. Yeah. So. Huge shout out to Chad Greenway for helping us put a little bit more on the map yeah. with the little shout out in the promo video. Greatly appreciate it. And, uh, you know, for all the years he was in a Vikings uniform, man, there were some great games. Oh, yeah. True Midwest guy from top to bottom. I make the joke all the time. Of course, it's been a few years since he was in a Vikings uniform. It's like, wait, the Great Duck Vodka guy used to play football? <laughs> That's weird. Whoa. <laughs> but a huge shield shout out goes out to Chad Green. 100%. Absolutely. We got a happy belated birthday. It was yesterday, but I did, you know, send a happy birthday notification, message, text, post, all that. The top fan, top fan and friend of the program, the Dixon James Bold, a.k.a. DJ. Not a day over 45 he looks, <laughs> but, you know, he's only 28. And I also got to send a little bit. Hey, there it is. There it is right there. I'll there move the microphone out of the there way here. Go. That's right. That's his ugly mug on a tank top <laughs> for the boys who were at his bachelor party. Yeah. Reminisce. That that Look at that. That is prime. He even got the blacked out tooth on it, too. <laughs> there it is. He can't. Happy, he can't happy birthday that. to my brother, Dixon. And, uh, you know, happy birthday, Bufy. And. You know, I'm sure we'll have him on the show very, very oh, soon. Yes. yes. We got to have it. Absolutely. Got to have it. It'll happen. <laughs> Stick taps we, to DJ Mold. Nice. Absolutely. Carl's all over it. Uh, we got to send a shield shout out to a team that has swung back into favor up until yesterday with the swing back by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers by picking up oh. Gronkowski. New England Patriots had my allegiance back once again for about. For about a day and a half, <laughs> unveiling their new uniforms for the season, making their, you know, color rush uniforms they had the last couple seasons, the Navy with the stripes on the shoulders. Now they're home primary uniforms and also unveiling a new jersey that is the, the, the white version of the color rush with the stripes on the shoulders and also an update. First uniforms that they'll have in the post Brady era. And yes, I am looking at options. And yes, <laughs> there will be an addition to the collection of the new jerseys. But which player to be named, that is yet to be seen. But also there was, when they did unveil these new jerseys, uh, the links that they did provide for fans to check out in the pro shop also had listed the alternate red throwback jerseys Ooh. in the mix. So quite possibly a return to the old Patriot Pat red throwback jerseys and gotta make this happen there's been enough teasing about it for the last couple of years gotta have it <laughs> gotta make it happen 
<laughs> hey, I think the Reds and uh, Nick, they lose Brady, they lose Gronk. Might as well lose the jersey, too. <laughs> Might as well. Just throw it all out. Just burn it to the ground. Just add it with the Buccaneers. There you go. Exactly. Yep, just throw it on top. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love it. All right, we got to go our next Shield shout-out, and we do have a little bit of some help here from the Kerf Doctor for our next one. As this past week, you know, the last couple of weeks, Dave Portnoy, El Presidente Barstool Sports, has been stuck at home like a lot of us, unveiling some unboxings. And lo and behold, friends of the show, the Granite City Lumberjacks, sent El Presidente a little care package. As you can see on the screen, Granite City Lumberjacks jersey and a hat. I believe our friend Carl can also elaborate if there were any other additions. Giving a shout out to the fellas of the Lumberjacks and showing them a little bit of love as well. Got a little colorful language to add on top. But if you, <laughs> if, you if you follow Prez on the socials, medias, and uh, Barstool Sports, go find the unboxing, and uh, I'm sure you'll see that. And we'll probably keep that picture around and uh, show a little love once again to our boys with the Granite City Lumberjacks. I mean, it was great. I mean, all of a sudden, you know, he's trying to pick either the hat or the jersey, and he picked the hat. Honestly. That's all right. That's okay. But he that's should okay. have taken the jersey. Should have definitely taken the jersey. I would have Horrible. loved to see one of the pizza reviews in the jersey. Who knows? Maybe he'll have it uh, coming up here pretty quick. He'll yeah, be eating a pizza. There you go, it's Carl. Like he, he also added the long sleeve shirt, too. There it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha. Fantastic. And, uh, you know, I wish I was a little better prepared for my last Shield shout out. But uh, if you follow me on the socials medias, you would have definitely seen it this uh, past oh, week. Yeah, yeah. But uh, we go shield shout out to our creative consultant, uh, Mrs. Sarah Ann Tuesfold, for finishing my uh, preparation for the next lumberjack season and it being a little bit of some outerwear. Got a, a, a vest that I bought for like $11 at Walmart, sewed on a old Granite City Lumberjacks patch on the back of it with the NA3HL logo on the left shoulder on the on the left shoulder. We're ready to go for next hockey season. I already got the United Heroes League jersey hanging in the closet. We're going to be ready to go. But a shield shout-out goes to our creative consultant for the fancy work with the needles and getting that taken care of. Gotta love it. I, Absolutely. Yeah, it looks really good. It looks really it does. good. I'm not going to lie. I saw it. It looks fantastic. Great job, uh, Miss Sarah, for that. I mean, that looks great. Absolutely. So... Is that it, Voldy? That'll do it. Or Shield shout-outs. All right. Again, great uh, shout-outs as always. And um, remember, uh, Zoners, we really appreciate you guys uh, chiming in. And, we, I mean, with Chad Greenway, with the promo video, shout-out to Ch Chad Greenway, again, for doing that for us. Um, Viking legend. I mean, no doubt about it. And, um, and if you need a jersey, too, you talk to our unofficial – Sponsor Jimbo Vold for Jersey. Okay. You know, he's got, got plenty more from what I heard here. So, uh, and then also you guys check out W2 performance uh, podcast by Will Rotel. Um, uh, great info on, you know, everything that he's doing with that podcast. You know, I've watched and listened to a couple episodes, check out his YouTube page. Fantastic. We'll keep sharing links. He'll keep, he'll keep chiming in as well. He's been sharing our stuff. So, again, a lot of good things happening here, Voldy. I think we're, we're going to uh, keep uh, rolling with it. And then Glant says, should have got Moss, brother. Well, oh. I'll let you uh, oh. figure that one out. So, uh, Court says, thanks for giving us something to look forward to. Keep killing it, fellas. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Stay blessed. Thanks, Court. Court. Appreciate you, you, bud. Appreciate you, man. And then he got Will Rotel saying, thanks, man. Hey, we got you, Will. We got you. So, um, anyway, that'll do it. But I think we're going to be back next week, I, I, I believe, I, I think. And who knows? I think so, too. Some people might show up. We might have some new content. But who knows who will chime in now. We got Chad Greenway. It's Chad Greenway approved. We'll see. So, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, anyway, as always, folks, keep in the zone. Hello. 
Hey, what's up, Minnesota sports fans? This is former Minnesota Viking linebacker Chad Greenway. Just want to give a shout out to Matt, Paul, and all of the Minnesota crew. Uh, catch them. It's a new podcast, Minnesota, all things Minnesota sports, live. Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. on Facebook Live. Hey, Skull Bikes, appreciate you guys. Thank you for watching Minnesota Sports Live. Join us Wednesdays at 7 p.m. for live show broadcast. And as Voldy likes to say, follow us on all the socials medias.